Now we are going to move on to exponents and logarithms. Short for logarithms, we we'll use the word logs. And they are used to solve unknown exponents. For example, if I have 2 to the power of a is equal to 8, we want to write 8 in terms of 2 to the power of something in order to solve a. In the lower grades, we learned that 8 is 2 to the power of 3, therefore a is equal to 3. But the way we do it with logs, is if I want to say 2 to the power of a is equal to 8 then I write it as a log the base of the exponent becomes the base in the log the actual answer becomes part of the log then a is standing by itself so notice what happens, it's like I'm still writing it as an exponent, but I put a log in front of it, the base of the log is still 2, but I swap the a and the 8. So this is where we get inverse functions from. And now if I solve this on a calculator, I would find that the log of 2 to the power of 8 is equal to 3. The reason why we use logs is because not everything would yield a integer or whole number. We can also find log values that are decimal and they are not as easy to solve as these. So how to remember the log? If for example I have x the power of anything is equal to y and I want to solve the a what I do is I put the base see the base of the exponent is x as the base of the log and I swap the a with the y so now a is equal to log x y you will become more comfortable with logs as we exercise and as we continue. In the next few examples, we are again going to determine the inverse function that was given to us. We are going to use the same four steps as before. So we replace fx with a y. We swap x and y's position. And the third step is write y in terms of x. But now I want to get the y alone. And there is no way of solving this using our previous previous knowledge so we need to use logs so we write y alone the base of the exponent becomes the base of the log the y would now be standing alone and the x would be part of the log and then our last step is to replace y with the inverse function notation.
Our next example is fx is equals to 3 to the power of negative x. Step 1. Write fx as y or replace fx with y. Step 2. Swap x and y's position. Step 3. Solve y in terms of x. Again, can't use our previous knowledge, so we need to apply logs. So the base of the exponent becomes the base of the log. The x is now part of the log, and then we have negative y in the exponent, so that becomes negative y. In order to find y as a positive value, we simply divide by negative 1. And our last step is to write y in the inverse notation. There is a restriction on logs that we need to consider. We will get more into depth with this restriction as we continue through the lessons. For now, what you need to know is that the base of the log must be positive. So the value that you put in there must be bigger than zero. So it can never have a negative value in the base of the log. This is important to remember as we continue. In this example, we have fx is equal to negative 4 to the power of x. We want to find the inverse function, so we follow the same four steps. Replace fx with y. Swap x and y's position. And now, if I were to apply the logs, I have a negative base in the log. And as we just explained, the base of the log cannot be negative. So I first need to get rid of the negative in front of this. So this is the same as saying negative 1 times 4 to the power of y. So I can simply divide by negative 1. So I have negative x is equal to 4 to the power of y. So y would stand alone. The base of the exponent becomes the base of the log. And now I have a negative x value there. And it's okay to have a negative value inside the log, but never a negative at the base. And lastly, I rewrite y as the inverse function notation. We can also determine the inverse of this equation if we have it as a log. The same four steps apply. So fx becomes y. I swap x and y's position. And this now is how I determine the inverse. Then I want to get y alone. So if I want to have y alone, the base of the log becomes the base of the exponent and then x becomes the actual exponent. Now that I have the inverse, I replace y with the inverse function notation. We are going to find the inverse of this log or the inverse of this function. So I replace fx with y. 
swap x and y's positions. This shows that I'm calculating the inverse. The base of the log becomes the base of the exponent, x becomes the exponent, and we have negative y. In order to get y alone, I divide by negative 1. And then lastly, I rewrite it as the inverse function notation. In our last example, we have fx as negative log 2 of x. So I replace fx of y. Swap x and y's position. Now before I can solve the log, I want to get rid of that negative. So that becomes negative x is equal to log 2y. Now the base of the log becomes the base of the exponent. The exponent itself becomes negative and y is now standing alone. Then I say inverse function is equals to 2 to the power of negative.